Throughout history, the greatest minds and the most successful people, Aristotle, Steve Jobs, Einstein, they swore by walking as their secret weapon for productivity and breakthroughs. People like Charles Darwin, Frederick Nietzsche, and even Virginia Woolf used walking to generate ideas and to solve problems. Nietzsche once said, all truly great things are conceived by walking. I know you've probably seen the hot girl walk all over TikTok, Twitter, whatever. Walking has completely changed my life. They're on to something. Walking is a brain and body hack that works for everybody, not just influencers. So I'm Jay, I'm a registered nurse, and I've spent years experimenting with ways to help people optimize their health and performance and transform their lives, right? There's a ton of tools and supplements and gear, gadgets, everything that can move the needle in terms of health and productivity. But every single time, walking is the simplest and the most effective tool. And by the end, you're gonna know exactly how to make walking work for you. So walking clearly has this long list of benefits and a quick Google search will tell you that. But how exactly is it transforming our brain? And why do the most creative people in history swear by it and use it to their advantage in their daily routines? So there's a few main players and molecules, proteins, all this stuff happening inside our brains that are legit growing and expanding our minds. And let me tell you, it's not the LSD that the guy down the street's trying to sell you. Now, honestly, this is really high level stuff. So the fact that you're here learning this stuff, I'm really proud of you. For sake of a deep yet simple understanding of this, we're gonna break down the science portion into five easy to understand segments. When we walk, especially at a steady pace, the brain increases the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is crucial for neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to adapt and learn and grow new neural connections. Think of BDNF like a supercharged fertilizer of your brain. So when you're walking, your brain is producing more BDNF. We've all been there. We have a big presentation or exam. And after hours of studying or preparing, you just feel stuck. This is precisely the moment when you should go for a walk. So as you step outside, your brain is releasing BDNF. This extra production floating around your brain is helping you strengthen the connections of the things that you just learned. When you're studying, have walking study breaks. Now this next part, I find super fascinating. It's kind of a new thing in science. They're called hope molecules. They're actually myokines. What scientists found is when you contract the muscles, they're releasing these myokines through your bloodstream. They're gonna start affecting your brain, basically signaling to it to have a better mood, have more hope, have a better outlook. And these myokines are also one of the many substances promoting neuroplasticity. Think of myokines as a messenger sent to the brain from your muscles. Walking will trigger the release to tell the brain to grow, adapt, and even heal from like past traumas. So walk more, trigger the release of these hope molecules. A Harvard psychiatrist, John Rady, I don't know how to say it, has called walking a little bit of Prozac and a little bit of Ritalin. More brain activity. Their brains are switched on after 20 minutes of casual walking and also saying it's miracle grow for the brain, which emphasizes the powerful effects of walking on our mental health. It's literally a drug. It's like a, a focus drug, but also an antidepressant, an anti-anxiety. It's this insane blend of molecules changing your brain, and I find that super cool. Something else is happening in the brain when you walk, and it's called optic flow. When you're walking, you're seeing things move past you, right? In your peripheral vision, you're seeing things move past you. This subtle, consistent visual feedback is calming the mind, and it helps improve focus. Andrew Huberman has discussed it in length before, but getting into optic flow, not just human vision, and two eyes. Now, walking also drastically reduces our stress levels. And I think you already know this. Have you ever been extremely stressed or anxious and you just like get up and you have to move? Your body is telling you, you gotta walk. If you can use walking to your advantage, it's gonna keep your stress levels lower way more often instead of sitting there having no progress. So walking also is protecting your brain from aging. And this is another fascinating kind of new science development called Clotho. Clotho is this protein that's linked to anti-aging in the brain. I first heard this from Dr. Peter Atia on his podcast, an increase in clotho production is shown to have, you know, anti-Alzheimer's effect, dementia, whatever. They're almost calling clotho like the fountain of youth. It's going to make you look better, but also feel better. And your brain works so much better. Your cognitive function is at its absolute peak when we have 
high levels of clotho. So walking is not only making you feel better, but it's actually helping you stay younger and look younger. So if all the science of how it affects your brain isn't enough to get your butt up in moving, the next segment, the physical benefits of walking, might just do that. So every time that you walk, you're triggering a cascade of biological changes that essentially are optimizing our hormones. Now that's really important to remember here. Now the truth is we as humans all sort of suffer from some of the same problems. Sick, low energy, sad, stressed, fat, overweight. And the interesting part is a lot of these struggles all boil down to hormones. At the root cause of many problems, walking is actually the problem solver. It's right in front of us. It's, it's a super easy, simple, and effective tool that is right in front of us. And let's dive deeper into the hot girl walk or what bodybuilders use when they're trying to cut for a show. I'm a step fanatic, man. Really? Yeah. I usually average 12,500. I love it though. I love walking. This is for good reason. Walking is a fat burning machine. So I have a coworker who recently want to make big changes in her life and I helped her lose over 20 pounds now. Now don't get me wrong, this was all on her. She put in the work, but one of the biggest things she did was start walking more. First is this extremely powerful in insulin sensitivity and glucose control. Walking just helps you absorb glucose molecules better into your muscles. So imagine that you just finished dinner, you're feeling kind of sluggish, maybe you ate a little bit too much. A quick 10 minute postprandial after meal walk helps shuttle that glucose right into your muscles instead of storing that extra as fat. And the best part about that is once you do that 10 minute walk, you feel so good. Like you get that energy back and it's crazy. It's crazy how good this works. A lot of weight loss is how our hormones are controlling us and walking more influences all of these hormones. So leptin is the hormone that signals that I'm full, super full. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone that starts giving you those hunger waves when you're like, oh my God, I need to eat right now. So the more we walk, the more we balance these. And one of the big things for fat loss is cortisol. Now this is always like such a nuanced subject and it's really hard to just say cortisol is bad because it's not all bad. Cortisol is great in some regards. From my experience working with thousands of patients, a lot of people have way too much cortisol chronically elevated throughout the day. They're hijacking it with stressful life, chronic stress, and just you know too much caffeine and not enough exercise. High cortisol leads to excess fat storage. Every single study about walking has showed us that brief walks can really drastically reduce our cortisol levels. So let's continue down this cortisol journey. So Andrew Huberman has made it well known how effective your life can be when you optimize circadian biology, right? Which is your sleep-wake cycles. Cortisol is a huge player in that as well as melatonin. Now the beauty of getting outside and walking in the day, our eyes, our brain, it's all interconnected to help us optimize those sleep-wake cycles when we are outside, when we're seeing the sunshine. We have photoreceptors on our body, on our cells, so when you walk in the morning, it helps wake us up, make us feel better because of how we're visualizing the light from outside. And if we walk at night, you know, like when the sun is setting, you're getting a signal that, oh my gosh, it's time to sleep. I see the sun setting. Our bodies are very effective at this, and that's part of the problem with us being chronically sat inside in the offices is we're not getting these normal circadian biology shifts that we would have when we were normal humans being outside back in the day. What this means for you is you're going to sleep so much better. And this also means that you're going to have more stable energy throughout the day. On top of that, we know from studies that it's going to reduce chronic diseases, reduce cancer. It activates our P53, which is a protein that suppresses tumor growth and cancer growth. Beyond hormones, another way that walking helps with our metabolism is how it boosts our mitochondrial function. And what are mitochondria? Come on, you've heard it in science class. The powerhouse of the cell. The more we walk, the more that we're like upgrading the engine of our car. We're the car. Okay. You get better fuel efficiency. You're utilizing that energy. You have more mitochondria. You have more horsepower. We have a chance if we stay focused and choose wisely to really continue to impact people's lives in some small way for the better. Let's take Aristotle, for example. He was famous for allegedly instructing his students while strolling outside. 
This is actually why his students were called peripatetics. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but what that means is a person who travels from place to place. Another name that you might be familiar with is Sigmund Freud. He was well known for doing consultations while walking. Let's take an example. Once an Austrian composer, Gustav Mahler, requested an urgent consultation via telegraph. Mahler's marriage was disintegrating and he was about to have a breakdown. Hence the emergency walk and talk with Freud. And Freud was also known to teach his students by going for walks in the evening. Harry Truman apparently woke up at 5 a.m. every morning to go for a vigorous two-mile walk. The funny part is, is he always wore a suit and tie while doing this. He also did a midday swimming session, but he was still wearing his eyeglasses. Kind of weird. Charles Dickens was, even from his childhood, noted to be an avid, even compulsive walker. Charles Dickens walked around 20 miles a day. That's almost a freaking marathon a day. The weird thing, I think, for him is he usually did his walking at night. 20 miles at night. Walking was his means of observing the cities around him, but also de-stressing. Dickens said that he found composition to be hard and painful work. The hours spent at his desk agitated him tremendously, and walking served as a safety valve. So what these people can teach us is that in order to bring out the best version of yourself, the most creative, the most intelligent, yet calmest and most emotionally stable version of yourself, you need to be walking more. And not only that, it's gonna shed the fat right off your body. And it's easy on your body. It's easy to do. How do we take action, right? We gotta take action here. There's a few ways that you can incorporate this habit into your life. First thing you do every morning is just go for a walk. Grab your cup of coffee and go for a walk. Even if it's 10 minutes, when you're taking phone calls or meetings, if you can, go for a walk during these. One of my favorite things is having a walking pad under my desk. Walking pad has been a great addition because sometimes I don't wanna be pulled away from my work but I don't wanna also sit on my ass all day. So, and I'll definitely link some walking pad options below. If you work at home or if you work at an office, get yourself a walking pad and a standing desk. I'm telling you, it's so worth it. And it's such an easy thing to incorporate. Plus walking pads, yes, they're kind of expensive, but not really. They're getting really, really affordable lately. It's so worth it. I even use walking pads like sometimes when I'm watching football or just watching entertainment because I feel a little bit guilty. I'm one of those people who I can't ever really relax. I'll just use my walking pad and it makes me feel a little better about myself. <laughs> use walking as your brainstorming tool before a major project or you're trying to figure out what to do with your life. Make big decisions. When you're anxious, go for a walk. When you're sad, go for a walk. When you're happy, go for a walk. And another beautiful thing to do is just use it as a time to be mindful. Now, Walk on over to this video right here because I think you're gonna like it. Thanks. Subscribe. Bye. I love you.